This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk us through this 2022 Flagstaff Microlite Model 25 FKS. Okay, I'm just going to go over some of the features and show them to you. Okay, so we're on the door side at the rear here. So you got regular crank down stabilizers, of course. This is your, um, I don't know if I can get it open here, everything's frozen and cold and let's see here, I don't want to force it, there it goes. So everything is, uh, or this is the water heater, I should say, I'm sorry. It's, um, the thing to know about this is, this is the drain plug right here. It's got an anode rod, anode rod took, took to it, a sacrificial rod. And it, it takes a 1 and 1 16th inch uh, um, socket, 6 point socket to screw this. Plus you're going to need a, 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 a extension plus a bar or a ratchet to break it with, okay? Uh, the switches to control it are inside. Right now it's empty because it's winterized, right? So um, I just want to remind you that you do not run it without water in the tank. You always make sure there's water in the tank before you turn it on after you uh, dewinterize or winter, yeah, dewinterize in the spring. Okay, this is just a sprayer right here. You got a coil that hooks up to it with a, with a hand grip on the end. Um, this is, let me see if I can do this with one hand here. Let's see if I can get lucky. There we go. So this is a two burner cooktop. Um, there's a hose back here and the hose connects to this quick connect down here. Okay. So keep that in mind. That's a, that goes right to the LP system. Also, you have a, a um, griddle and a table that sits on this rack here. Okay, and, and it, it's gas, it runs on gas also, so you'll have a hose that comes down and hooks up to this quick connect, which is right there. Hopefully you can see that. So you got two LP quick connects. Um, of course, a power awning with LED strip. You got outside speakers. TV mount, the signal out and power to put a TV out here if you, if you choose to. Um, this device here is a, is a vent. It's your range hood vent. So if you want to vent to the outside with your range hood fan, you have to push up on each side. There's a tab on each side of that vent. You push it and the baffle will flap freely. Whenever you're venting to the outside, you want it to flap freely. So you just do that so, it, 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 so it's freed up. But when you travel, you want to snap it shut or when you're in storage, that sort of thing, okay? All right. This is just a, if you wanted to get a solar battery charger, just a panel to charge your battery, it would plug in right there. Okay, this is your hitch. It's um, a Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control, so it's a, it's a good one. And um, uh, we'll show you how it operates when you pick up. This right here, just so you know, is the LP hose I told you about for your grill, or your griddle. That's stored there. All right. So coming around, you have uh, two 30-pound LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. You have this uh, power tongue jack with a hitch light on it. If this ever fails, you can pull this plug here, and there's a, it comes with a small crank that'll uh, actually uh, snap on there, and you can crank it manually to get yourself out of trouble. Um, you also have two deep cycle marine batteries here. They're wired together at 12 volts, so it's still outputting 12 volts. It just doubles the storage capacity. And also, right here, if you can see it, that, that switch knob there, that's to kill the battery. Right now it's green, the battery's on, but if you needed to shut it off for some reason, you can shut it off right there. All right, docking lights, of course. Um, this is an outside shower slash sprayer. Okay, Let's move through here. Let me just see what we've got here. Let's see if things in here that I should tell you about. This is a reducer to reduce your your short core down, and that is your your um, dump hose. Okay. All right. So there's your valves there. Gray valve for sink and shower water. Black valve for toilet water. Always dump the black first, then the gray. Um, your fresh water drain is down here for your fresh water tank. Um, so that brings us to here. This this is where you fill your fresh water tank at. Nine times out of ten, let me get over the snow here before I fall. Nine times out of ten, uh, you're going to get 
uh, water from your city water hookup, which is right over here. You're just going to hook up your hose right here, turn it on, and everything is pressurized and, and all the fixtures work. Now, if you go to a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you, uh, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank here and then use your onboard pump to pump the water. Everything, will, all, the, all the fixtures will work just like you have city water even though you're pumping it. So, two options there. Of course, this is your 30 amp, 30 foot cord. Uh, and with, I told you there was a little reducer to reduce it down to a household plug. Um, this is the black tank flush. So, after you've dumped your black and gray tank, you can leave the black tank valve open, hook the hose of the dump station onto here, and um, turn it on and it'll flush your tank out. It'll clean off the sensors. Uh, it's a very good thing to do. If, if, you're, if your dump station has a working hose, definitely hook it up and, and use it. Um, that is your backup camera right there. It activates when you turn on your running lights. Keep that in mind. Don't if you have it on your running lights on automatic with most tow vehicles, it will not turn them on. You have to physically grab the knob and turn it on, okay? Um, you have a ladder, which is great because the manufacturer states you should inspect your, your roof every 90 days. So you figure uh, you'll go up there or have somebody else go up there. You can walk on the roof, no problem. But you're going to, um, you're going to check the, all, the, the, all the sealant that's up there. It's called lap sealant. Check it for cracking or separation to make sure the water can get through. Um, if you see an issue with it, take care of it immediately. Also, you're going to look at all the attachments, make sure they weren't damaged by low branches or road debris flying up or that sort of thing. And like, like I said, it's an expense, uh, inspection because nine times out of ten, you're not going to have to do anything. You could go up there for years and not see anything to, to, to touch up. But you don't know for that for sure. That's why you inspect it, okay? Because if, if, you, if you do that, you'll never, ever have water in your trailer. It's all a matter of keeping it, uh, uh, keeping it sealed really well. So, this is the table I told you about that hangs on the, uh, hangs on the rail on the side. This is the crank. Let's see if I get it out. I can't very well do it. Anyway, the small silver crank is the crank for the power tongue jack. You have um, another crank for uh, your stabilizer jacks. And let me look over here. To make sure. I'm going to say the right thing. Yes, you have another one. This table should have been stored elsewhere here. I just want to show it to you so you can see what I'm talking about here. Angle up here. Hold on, please. There we go. Sorry about the camera work. I'm all, I know I'm all over the place. This particular crank has a cylinder with a... Let me make sure you can see this. A cylinder with a uh, slot cut in it. Okay. That's used to crank the slide outs in an emergency. So if you've got an emergency that fails for some reason, you can actually bring that crank over to here. You can stick it through that hole. Um, I don't know if I can get you a good picture, but coming through the frame is a shaft with a pin through it. You would put that crank, which is a cylinder with a, with a channel cut in it, you put it on there, lock it on, and, and crank it. You can actually crank the slide room in and out manually if it's an emergency. Okay. Okay. So, here we are inside. This is your control panel right here. Let me get down here so I can show you. Okay, so, first of all, you have lights here. Okay. Second of all, you've got your, your slide out switch and your power awning switch. Never leave the power the awning out unattended if you're not going to be, you know, there to, there to take care of it. Um, your water pump is turned on like this. That's used to pump water out of the fresh water tank. Also used to uh, winterize the trailer. To let your water heater on gas this way, electric this way. Never turn these on unless you got water in the tank. Okay. And then you have tank heaters in this one to extend your season, so that's where that turns on, okay? Also, your battery's charged, as you can see. Fresh water's empty, black is empty, gray, one and two are empty. Um, as it fills, it goes up in one-third increments. Once you get past two-thirds, you're going to have to start thinking about dumping your black and gray tank. Also, there's an app for this panel. You can see the, the details here. And this has something called a Wi-Fi Ranger. That's what this switch is. The Wi-Fi Ranger is a signal booster that's on your roof for public Wi-Fi. So when you when you look in your phone or your family looks in all their devices, you'll 
and the uh, Wi-Fi section, you'll see Tenton uh, 2607. That's that's you. That's this. So um, you'll make up a passwords for all your devices so it logs out automatically. Then if you go go to the control panel by typing this address into a browser right here on the bottom line, that and then when you get to the password, put in the temporary password. Change me now. 2607. You'll obviously you'll change it to something that everybody knows and can remember. Um, so basically, when you go to this address, you'll be able to see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees. So you'd pick out, let's say, the public, uh, the campground Wi-Fi, let's say, and you would log on to it. Therefore, all all your devices will hook up to the Wi-Fi Ranger automatically, and all you have to do is hook up the Wi-Fi Ranger up to the to the uh, public Wi-Fi and you get a, it's a really good signal booster it's just a really good product so um, there's also a feature where you can get cellular service through it you have to pay a you know monthly fee just like you would with any phone or tablet and you probably go through your same provider for that but most people just use the free option um, because uh, uh, they don't you know it's it's it suits them if you work from your trailer sometimes people who work from their trailer will have the, the cellular um, plan but most people go with the free booster okay all right so get up here okay so let's see where we're at here obviously this is a microwave works like any other microwave this is the the uh, range hood that I told you about the fan to run the fan you have to um, Make sure you open that baffle on the outside so it vents to the outside. Light, of course. You have a, a sparker right here. You turn this clockwise to spark. Three, three knobs and three burners. Then this one farthest to the right is for the rain, or for the oven. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So I just turned that on, sparked it, and it lit. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now, in the oven here, there's a pilot light all the way to the back at the bottom right I'll spark it so you can see it there you go okay so what you're going to do is you're going to uh, go to the oven knob turn it to the picture of the pilot light right there then you depress it you keep it depressed and then you spark it with the other hand once it lights you're going to um, uh, hold it in for another 10 seconds or so and then when uh, when uh, you get to that point and it heats up you're going to just uh, go to operating temperature, of course, and then it'll cycle like it ever does. But when you shut it off, uh, the flame goes out, obviously. But you're going to have to uh, relight the pilot light each time you use the oven because that goes out also. Okay, Whew. went a long way to say that. All right, this I didn't prep this trailer, but I see this. This is your tire monitor. You'll have to you'll have to read about it and learn to use it. It tells you temperature of your your hub and then the pressure in your tires. And you can expand upon it too if you choose. Uh, keys here, of course. Let me hang those there. This is the rest of your um, backup camera. Uh, the uh, 4.3 monitor will go into your tow vehicle. You'll plug it into the cigarette lighter, and it'll link up automatically to your camera. And it activates, like I said, when you when you physically turn on your running lights because there's no backup circuit, so it uses the running light circuit. All right. This is the rack for your griddle and that's your griddle it well, doesn't normally sit here but that's where he's got it right now that hangs on the outside as I told you your table right now is in the stowed position on the sit down on the cleats you also can use this for a bed but um, it's it, the legs are hinged so you'll pull it up and snap the legs into place and um, when you want to lower it you'll just push this to the right that that uh, yellow latch uh, the idea is you want it you want it down when you're traveling because if you don't it can bounce around and break something. It's heavy and it can break a window or put dents in your wall or whatever. So when you're traveling you always want it down on those cleats. Alright. Your refrigerator is a um, 12 volt DC refrigerator. A lot of space in there. Uh, this device here is your is your um, uh, power converter. So what it does is it uh, converts uh, uh, AC to DC power. So when you're plugged in, you've got uh, regular household circuit breakers here, 110 AC, and they're all labeled, just like you'd see them at home. And then it's converted from AC to 12 volt DC over here, so you got 12 volt fuses. 
and they're all labeled. If any of these fuses blow, they'll actually light up and you can see them through this tinted plastic here. Okay. Also, it's important to know that these 240s are masters. Um, so if you have a wild power surge or a lightning strike or anything like that, and the left side or the, the 12 volt side goes out, always look right here. That's where you're going to find the problem. Just replace the 40s. That's, that's their job. That's what they do is protect the whole, the whole 12 volt side. So, okay. Um, also, one more thing for this it's a power, it's a battery tender. So it'll send so much energy your batteries up front have and need. And it'll, it'll send, if they're topped off, it'll just trickle a couple amps up there. If it's uh, down, if they're drained, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep them charged up, okay? So it also is a battery tender. Okay. Now, let me just spin this way. This remote here is for your fireplace. Okay, so you can change the appearance of the fire like that. It has a timer on it so you can actually uh, you know set the timer for it to turn on uh, you know 20 minutes before you get up in the morning that sort of thing. Your thermostat there okay and then of course it has um, uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit you can select. It has a fan in it so it, it kicks out the heat. Okay. Your, your sound here is right here you can you can play CDs and DVDs of course you can um, it has Bluetooth so you can hook up wirelessly with your phone or tablet and stream it that way um, it also has a USB in it and this this HDMI next to it is, is an HDMI in um, so let's say if you had a, a, a game machine or something that you wanted to use during a rainy weekend for kids or grandkids or something like that um, you could plug it straight into the system right there if you needed to. Okay, two or three speaker zones, but the two first two are just here, right? Um, in this area, uh, they kind of do the same thing or give you the same sound, but but you still want them both on when you're inside. And, and speaker zone three is outside. Now, one of the neat features of this is you can set the the source and the uh, volume of the outside speakers separately from the inside. You do that by by pushing Z3, which is zone three. Then you will, you will set your, let's say you're putting a radio on at a certain volume, you do that. And then somebody could watch a video inside and you could be listening to the radio outside. So, but you got to set, push Z3 to set the speakers outside separately. Okay. Of course the TV pretty much works like any TV and let me show you what we have here. It's, uh, it's, it's, I'm going to, let me, I'm going to take the camera off here I just got to pull it out there so okay so you can see it locks into place so always lock it into place before you start driving um, this this green light should always be on when you're using the antenna it's a signal booster for the digital antenna if you don't have it on and you're using the antenna you won't get a good picture so remember that um, let me look around make sure I haven't forgot anything here this is a uh, your carbon monoxide LP gas detector also, if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. That's three different uh, things there. This is your power inverter. See, I just turned it on there. I told you the converter converts AC to DC power. So the converter will take a, a regular household current, turn it to 12 volt DC. This does just the opposite. It takes 12 volt DC out of your batteries, and it turns it into 110 AC. Okay, only one is on. You're only going to run the inverter when you need to invert something. You don't just leave it on all the time. There's no reason for it. Only one plug here is going to be inverted. And we'll see if they actually put the sticker on like they're supposed to. They don't always do it. It's probably over here. Yeah, so this, this receptacle says inverted circuit. So, so that's the one that you could plug into. So let's say once you start inverting like it is now, you could actually take an AC appliance like a hair dryer or something like that. You could plug it right in there. Uh, the object, obviously, is if you're at a camp camping somewhere without AC power um, you can use the you can convert the power in the batteries to AC and run run one appliance on it okay always shut this off when you're not using it there's no reason to invert power you gotta hold it a second invert power when you're not using it so there you go okay and that brings us to the solar panels okay let's get some light here all right so this is your solar controller um, right, it says you've got flooded batteries, which is true, that's what you have, right? 
Um, B is the only button that matters at this point. Um, so you're just going to push B. There's only one battery according to this because they're wired together. Um, like I said, it, it pr puts out 12 volts, but it just doubles the storage capacity. So it considers it one battery. So um, right here, you got 13.5 volts coming off of them, which is excellent, right? You push B again, you're getting, because we got snow on the roof, you're getting just 0 0.3 amps from the sun. The sun going to the solar panel, you can see the arrow from the sun to the solar panel. And so it's putting the 3 amps or 0.3 amps in the battery. It, it, it depends on what, how sunny it is, what position you're in, what position the sun's in. Are you in the, is it cloudy or not cloudy? Is it, are you um, uh, in the shade or what? But you can be, you can be putting 6.0 amps into the battery, for example, you know, which is not on, it's pretty typical, down to nothing, depending on what, where you're at and what you're doing. But um, that's how you tell what, what you're, what, uh, what amperage you're getting from the solar panel right there, 0.3. So you push it again, your batteries are at 100%, which is what you want, and you have 12 amp hours of power. Okay, and back to the 13.5 volts output. So keep that in mind. Now, this there's an app for this. This is Bluetooth, so you can download the app for this. I, I strongly recommend. You may know more about this sort of thing than I do. I'm not. I'm just assuming you don't, so I don't miss out on anything. But um, if you need to, you can always. Uh, Go to the manufacturer's website and look at their product videos uh, and learn a lot from those too. Um, so this, where was I at here? This also has, this control panel also has an app you can get, if I didn't mention that. So, um, you, for example, you can, you can plug in your phone right here to this USB. If, you're, if it's dead and it's emergency, and the solar panels will charge it. Okay. Um, now this, this is just an analog thermostat, heat, off, fan, and cool, we're on heat now obviously, off is off, fan is the air conditioner running without the compressor, so it just circulates air, cool of course is air conditioning, try to always leave the fan on auto if you can, that's the best way to run it. Alright, flying here, so, sink is the same as any other sink, you have a four speed fan, Always remember, you want to, with the shower, you want to run the fan to pull the humidity out. These things are built super tight. You don't want to create a climate where mold or mildew could grow. So you always vent. When you have people over, and it's the time of year where you're going to get some condensation from your breath, for example, breath, for example you can run this on low, and it'll pull all of that out. You won't, you won't notice anything. So it's a, it's a good thing to have. Now, one thing that makes the shower a little different is this device here, which is the um, shower miser which is basically a, a circulating system that circulates hot water around in a loop while it's heating up. So first of all you put it in this position, right? You turn on your hot water and normally it would just come while you're heating up the water, it, the cold water would just come out of the shower head and go down the drain. So in drought areas you would be uh, wasting water for one thing and when you just send it down the drain into your gray tank you're wasting space in your gray tank, right? So it's very inefficient. So when you put it in this position and you turn it on, it circulates it around from this, from here to the water heater and back in a constant loop while it heats up. When you look at this blue piece here, as it heats up, it'll turn kind of a beige's color. So when you see it turn beige, beige's brownish, um, you know the water's hot at that point. Then you can turn it on like this, and it works like a regular shower. Um, so. It's a circulator. Again, you can always go to manufacturers' uh, uh, product videos and, and look at that also. Okay. Now, the toilet works like any other RV toilet. You got a flush pedal here. Um, the black tank is directly below. Uh, you can see some antifreeze trickling out here. Um, so the, the bottom line is this: you can't use it dry. The, the, the black tank can't be dry. So when you get to the camper and you hook up your power and your water. You will put one dose of chemical in here, whichever brand you use, just read the directions. One dose, and then you'll step on the pedal and let about a gallon of water go into the gray tank or the black tank below, right? Uh, some people use more, it's up to you. But the thing is, you got to have water and chemical in there, or the smell will be overwhelming, plus it can get clogged up. So you always have to have water and chemical in there. Now, when this thing flushes, it'll default to the water level about right here. So if you're going to use it and you need more water in it, you just slightly push the pedal down like that, where the trap doesn't open. 
But when you do that, the valve will kick in and it'll fill this up this bowl as high as you want. So you can put as much water as you want in there. You just have to do it each time. Okay? Alright. All right, we're rolling here. Let's see what else we've got. We're still cleaning here now. You see, this this stuff, you'll get a bit of it sometimes. It comes out of the, the air conditioning or or well air conditioning vent, even and then also the fan goes through there, but it'll blow this out. We always call it snow, but it's just styrofoam from the styrofoam duct work. And after a while, it won't come out anymore, but it just, as you bounce down the road and use it, there'll be a few times where you get a bunch of some of this stuff coming out, okay? No big deal. I'm looking for my light switch here. Oh, here it is. Okay. So you have storage underneath here, of course. Um, other than that, there's nothing really, really uh, unique about it. You have a, a, a vent here. If you ever want to, you can all, you can have um, you can install a similar vent in any in any roof vent than you like you have in a bathroom, and you could uh, it makes a big difference on those days where it's not really um, uh, it's not really hot, but it's uh, you know hot enough to use the air conditioner. Oh, okay. You can run the fan, and it will uh, it'll you know help you out anyway if if you choose to. But you can't you always have that option. Um, Okay, and of course this, there's another TV here, and this locks into place. Same barrel thing here. Okay, let me let me do that now so that nobody forgets. Okay, okay. Sorry about the camera work as always. <laughs> I have to say that all the time. Emergency escape window. You push it through like that, all the way through, and then you grab hold of this tab, this red tab, and pull the screen out, and then you can exit that way. Okay, and that's of course the remote for your bedroom TV. Okay, so let me look around real quick and see if I forgot anything here. I think I have pretty much got it. So remember, inversion, which is going from 12 volt DC to 110 AC, and conversion, going the other way from AC to DC, it does both those things. Okay. All right, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember, the uh, manufacturer wants you to inspect the roof every 90 days. That's very important. If you do that and you take care of any any issues with uh, cracking or separation or damage, this trailer will be bone dry 20 years from now. You'll never have water issues, but you got to inspect the roof. People generally don't do that enough. Um, you can walk on the roof. Uh, also, we're winterized right now, so there's antifreeze in the system. The water, hot water tank is, is empty and uh, it's bypassed, so keep that in mind, okay? One last thing. I just remember, this also has a, a, a water filter canister in it. That's the, that's the filter, and this is the wrench for it. Um, you only you change this out every single year if you're going to use it. Some people don't use it because it's, uh, you know, it's um, they don't drink the water, so they don't feel it's necessary. But um, if you do use it, after you after you dewinterize in the spring, you put that in the canister, right? Use it all year, and, and before you winterize, you throw it out, and uh, next spring you put another one in. So it only lasts a year. Okay, and uh, this is the, the for your outside TV. Remember, I told you it was a bracket. That's just the other half of it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.